The peace of God shining in me now. The peace of God shining in me now. The peace of God shining in me now. The peace of God is shining in me now. The peace of God 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 is shining in me now. The peace of God shining in me now. The peace of God shining in for each one of us to realize finally that A Course in Miracles is not even a book. I was just saying this, wasn't I? <laughs> a lot of us think that A Course in Miracles is a book. But it's not. What is, what is it now? An alarm clock! An alarm clock. Yes, that's what A Course in Miracles really is. It's almost as if we rehearsed this. Yeah. <laughs> an alarm clock. Why is, why is A Course in Miracles really an alarm clock? Well, think of it this way. When, when you're going to go to sleep at night and, and you, you have to go to work in the morning, whatever it is, you decide what time you're going to wake up and you set your alarm. You set it. Nobody sets it for you, I don't think. Usually you set your alarm. And then you sleep and you, you create a whole world that seems very real in that moment. A world where there are other people that you interact with, there are, are people that you have, you know, that you make love to, people that you have fights to, people in your family, everything you can imagine. And it seems very real, right? I mean, when you're in that dream, it seems very real. But then that time comes that you decided, and the alarm clock goes off. But what happens if you're kind of like me, and you don't really want to get up in the morning? How many of you have ever integrated the sound of the alarm into your dream? So the, right. So the alarm clock is going off, but instead of realizing that it's the alarm clock, you, you go to your window and you think, why is that fire truck wailing its siren and sitting out in front of my, my house like that? It's not a fire truck. It's the alarm. It's telling you it's time to wake up. 
And it's the exact same thing with the Course in Miracles. Fifty years ago, an incredible woman named Helen Schuckman, yeah. who was a professor of psychology at Columbia University, heard a voice say to her, this is a Course in Miracles, please take notes. Fifty years ago. And even though this woman didn't really believe any of it, she struggled, she wrestled with it the whole time for seven years. She committed herself to writing down everything that this voice said. And here we are now, 50 years later, celebrating the transformative awakening that this has brought about in our lives. My friend Vicki and I, we were talking earlier today that what we think we're going to do is we start putting up big, huge billboards in cities all over the country that someone's standing there with this great look in their face and it says, it works! <laughs> A Course in Miracles! We are the examples that this is real. That this is not just a book that, that a, a woman in New York one day decided to write. We are the examples that prove that this is real. Jesus says in the Course, show them that I did not die by the fact that I live within you. And so that's what we're here to celebrate today. And there are churches, almost 300 churches around the country. Many of them are tuned in right now. And they are going to be watching this. They are with us right now. And we're going to be celebrating through this beautiful movie, A Chorus in Miracles. But I want to bring up a few people that are going to be joining us in the movie and are here with us tonight. Um, first, I'm going, to interview, I'm going to introduce our dear friend Lisa Natoli, who is with us tonight. Put your hand over your heart 
And I want you to know that the peace of God is shining in you now. While you do nothing, it's shining in you now. It's always been shining. And the light, when you acknowledge it, it grows stronger. It grows brighter. And you start working with Christ. You acknowledge, yes, I'm working with a guide now. So when you watch this movie tonight, I ask that you just keep your focus on that we're here now and healing is being accomplished. And I'm so grateful that we are together. And thank you, James, for having the courage to put together this awesome movie. Beautiful. Thank you. We're going to have all three of them come up here. Um, next, I want to introduce uh, Lisa's um, cohort in salvation, the amazing <laughs> Bill Free, who has just become one of my dearest friends, and his commitment, his 100%, astounds me. So let's welcome Bill. Thank you. Well, my life wouldn't be where it is today if it wasn't for Vicki Poppy. I really have to say thank you, Vicki, for inviting me to New England to this beautiful weather and this beautiful <laughs> place on the map where everything happens. But really, uh, A Course in Miracles has become, I mean, it, from my background, which was Christian before A Course in Miracles, A Course in Miracles showed up in my life as the, as the Holy Grail. It really showed up as the thing that I had been looking for my whole life. And as soon as I found the Course, I thought, this is it. This is the roadmap that Jesus was talking about 2,000 years ago. This is what he was telling his disciples about. It, and this is what Paul, the Apostle Paul, was talking about. He just didn't know it. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And the, road, the, the workbook lessons of A Course in Miracles, the text, the manual for teachers, The Course in Miracles offers us freedom. It offers us freedom from, our, from, our, from, from what we do to ourselves and what we do to other people. It gives us a whole new way of seeing the world so that we can change our mind about how we experience the world. So I am so psyched and I also want to say thank you, Jimmy, for uh, putting this uh, amazing uh, course in Miracles together and also the workbook lessons in song. I don't know if you guys are signed up to ACIM Revival, but Jimmy has put all the workbook lessons to just um, this amazing music the peace of God is shining in me now. That's one of my favorites. It's 188. And it's funny, when Lisa was talking to someone in this audience about uh, Jimmy was going to do the workbook lessons this year, and she goes, uh-oh, uh Lisa, competition. And when Lisa first mentioned it to me, I was going, oh, really? <laughs> and, you know, because I, I didn't have that instant, there's no competition in the mind of God. <laughs> But, but it only took me about, about 10 seconds to say, you're right, you're right. There's no competition in the mind of God. We do need to help Jimmy. And as soon as I said that, Jimmy comes down and sits with us, and that became that was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And I just really love you, Jimmy, and I thank you, and I, I also love you, Lisa. And, <laughs> and thank you, Vicki Poppy, for bringing all this together in my life. We have seven minutes before we're going to actually start the movie, and before we do that, we're going to do one song, but before that, um, I want to introduce the woman who said yes. The power of that yes is one of the biggest reasons why we are here today. We all need people in our lives like this. When we come up, or when we feel something emerge within us that we know is spirit-driven, and we go to them, and they feel it too, and they say yes, move forward, commit to this. This is powerful. And that's my dear friend, Vicki Poppy, who I've known for 25 years. And I first had the idea 
to put all of these lessons, these amazing lessons to music, I shared it with Vicki. She said yes, and that is why we are here tonight. So thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Jimmy. So isn't this about family? Look around. It's always, when we come together, it's a reunion. But it's not just a reunion of bodies and familiar experiences. It's a reunion of purpose. There's a shared purpose that has sprung into our hearts because, like Jimmy said, the alarm clock has gone off and we've all said yes to that purpose. And what has happened is we recognize one another. And when we recognize one another, we celebrate. That's what this is about. It's about recognizing that not just that we are family, that share one purpose, one purpose of really remembering who we are, knowing that God's will for us is real happiness, and that we want nothing less but finding out that we are more than family, that we are one. Yes. Yes. And that's the experience that we're moving into now. And when Jimmy called and said, oh, I have this idea, it like, like when, um, when Elizabeth the babe uh, leapt in her womb. That's how I felt. Yes, we need the higher vibration of music. We need this to be heightened and raise this in our consciousness with music. Because when we sing, St. Augustine, we pray twice, but when we sing it, we become it. We recognize our own beingness when we sing. And bringing the, the this is our music. These are the words Jesus has given us as a family here in time to remind us, to awaken, to awaken to this song, and not to a rude alarm clock, but to awaken to a lullaby of heaven, so that we live here in happiness. We live here playfully. We live here by grace. We live here because we want nothing except love to guide us and lead us, and we are willing to look at whatever else was in our minds and let it go. And when we let it go, we pray and play together, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, these beautiful people you are going to see in the movie. Thank you so much. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. We're going to see them in just a few minutes in the movie. And so many others. I remember when I decided to make this movie, I didn't really want just to interview the people that are well-known who have maybe written books about the course. There are a few people like that. But more than anything, I wanted to just go out and meet interesting, creative people who are living A Course in Miracles in extraordinary ways. And boy, did I find them, which you are about to see. And, and that's what inspires me, is how can each one of us, in our own way, live this? Not just talk about it, not just read the book, but to really have it come to life. And many, for many of us, that is in active ways, in other ways, it's contemplative, it's very quiet. It doesn't have to be one way or another. However, it is emerging in grace through each one of us. So before we start the movie, I just thought, since the movie is filled with music, we're going to share a quick song. We have three minutes before we're going to start the film. So let me share a quick song with one of my favorite lessons. You'll hear this, actually, in the, in the movie. The lesson is, in quiet, I receive God's word today. All right. Take a nice deep breath. In quiet, I receive God's word today. Why did I receive God's word? In quiet, I received God's word today. Why I received God's word? In quiet, I received God's word today. Why I received. In quiet, I receive God's word today. Why I receive God's word. Let this day be a day of stillness and of quiet listening. If I will 
the interesting things about doing this live broadcast is I'm having a direct experience that time is not real because <laughs> one minute I'm told there's three minutes, then there's five minutes, and then there's two minutes, and then there's eight minutes. Apparently now we have one minute, so. <laughs> so as you know, there are hundreds of people watching right now, thousands of people with us from around the world who are excited about this movie that we're about to see, A Course in Miracles. It has been a true labor of love. For me, you know, I've made about six movies now, and usually there's a big crew involved. This is the first time that I did almost everything myself, from most of the shooting, to the editing, to much of the music. We had some amazing people, like our friend Lori Harris, who was in the audience, who they're the ones who got on the phone and called every Unity Church and every center of spiritual living in the country and, and talked them into, okay, nine seconds, okay. So, wherever you are, whoever you are, I love you, enjoy. Shining in. 